really enjoyed this season for a number of reasons. Character development that this show is known for is still going strong and they do it with two new characters that are being chosen and Miguel's father and we see them going into depth. What they do with these characters is they show what they present to others but they also show us the characters when the mask is taken off. Very enjoyable. We also get to see characters like Johnny uh, somewhat grow as a human after being hit with such a huge responsibility. It's actually interesting seeing him uh, somewhat grow up and being able to go at the task. Whilst Daniel on the other hand, he's having this huge struggle, he's going this downward spiral as he's so obsessed with the revenge of Terry Silver and it leads him down this path and it comes to a point where Johnny himself is the one that helps him get out of this situation. It's really intriguing. Another thing that I enjoyed was actually seeing that these two characters, Daniel and Johnny, putting their ego to the side and focusing on the task at hand and that is Terry Silver's Cobra Kai, which is not only taking over the valley, but it's going to be going even further than that, possibly global, so they need to focus and stop that. also enjoyed that uh, other characters who have had these beefs, somewhat petty, pointless beefs throughout the entire show, finally dead these and put them to an end, and somewhat do reconciliation, and even have some quite nice bonding moments, even if it is very small moments in the show. We got to see Sam get somewhat of a redemption. Even though she didn't fight her antagonist, she still got to win what she should have won in the previous season. Another thing that this show does, which maybe it's just me, but for people who see Cobra Kai, who aren't in their wrath or on the actual team, they may they're perceived as quite nice people and it's a good thing for the community. Kind of like how right-wing politicians are looked at by the public or at least how they try to present themselves. While Miyagi Dojo, on the other hand, they try to expose them and because of that they kind of get wronged by Cobra Kai but because of that they kind of have this uh, persona of somewhat seeming whiny and maybe to an extent, extent obnoxious as they believe that they are in the right and if you believe otherwise you are wrong or somewhat brainwashed and they're the right ones to believe in and they kind of come off as left-wing politicians uh, at least how the public sometimes perceive them well, I just wondered if this was part of the writer's plan or if it's just maybe me looking too deep into it. Another thing that the show does remarkably well is the humour. It's still tires ever and it had moments where the show was so over the top it was hysterical. Honestly, some great moments. Speaking of things that the this show masters in is the fight scenes. Some brilliant fucking scenes. Amazing fighting, great choreographing fights, somewhat Escalating further with some multiple fights happening in the background, so great. And in the final episode, they f go a bit further than that and actually show these characters using weaponry, where really elevating it to an extent where characters' lives are at stake. And it was really great, especially for the final episodes. That's what you want in the finale, even if it does come off a tad excessive. Now, when it came to the finale, I do have a few issues with it. It's sort of a mixed bag, really. First of all, we see the character Mike Barnes, who is a recurring character. He appeared very briefly in early parts of season five and only came back really just to kind of disrupt the flow of what the characters were up to. They, for some reason, allow this man to kind of get into them, puts these other characters into a dangerous situation while he himself is unconscious, and then comes in like a last minute. It just seemed very out of all, out of the ordinary, and it just seemed like a very weak plot device in order to get characters to act out of their natural progression we've been seeing, somewhat out of character. It just, it didn't feel right. I don't think they did him justice, and he was just a pawn in the writer's hands. So that's one aspect of the ending I wasn't a big fan of, but I loved the kids' point of view as they, their plotline was really interesting. Now apart from a betrayal, which I personally saw as a bit weak, the fight scenes and what was happening with them, that was really entertaining watching-wise. Another thing I did enjoy, but like I mentioned earlier, they introduced weapons with the adults and 
it was interesting, but at the same time it changed the way I was watching it. I, it felt like a different show altogether. As lives are at stake, and we don't really, I haven't really seen this from the Karate Kid franchise or inside Cobra Kai, so it, it, it's a new thing to experience. And it, I don't know, I don't know how I quite felt. Mixed bag, really. Another thing about the finale is I enjoyed seeing Daniel finally getting his win and a very impeccable one at that and not only did he redeem himself but he got to redeem Miyagi Dojo. The last thing is that obviously they get this massive win but at the same time they get this somewhat weird loss. I have to be completely honest I wasn't it was a very strange loss and it's interesting but I just don't think it's a whole season worthy plotline wise personally. Now when it comes to the show overall I do have its, it does have its criticisms, the main one being it's a bit predictable. A lot of the moments within this season I was predicting quite a lot, it was quite sad really as even the ending itself is quite predictable to guess. and. Yeah, I don't know, it just disappointed me. When it came to Daniel, I felt like his character was just off the rails a bit too much. Now, we have seen Daniel going on a downward spiral in earlier seasons, but in this one, he's, he's taken a downward spiral to the point that he's not even following Miyagi Dojo rules, such as don't strike first, which was a huge thing he always did. And it's up until in this season, we see him breaking that for so many reasons. And he's allowing the enemy to get into his head so quick and I thought in the previous seasons Dan, old Daniel then wouldn't have been so caught off guard but in this one it just seemed a bit out of character personally. When it came to plot devices I wasn't the biggest fan of how they wrapped up Miguel's father story as it felt like it was filler as it was a two episode story and then they just wrapped it up and they don't mention it after episode 4. Which is disappointing. Now maybe they are going to continue in season 6 if they get to that. But I don't know. It's, it felt so pointless. My next criticism is probably just me. But I just realised this show's mentioning a lot of swear words. Like fuck. That word got thrown around quite a lot in this season. Which I found a bit strange. It's usually like the past 4 seasons have always been shit, bitch, bastard, asshole. Those are the main swear words. Kind of like if you're on AMC, but I don't know, it just felt a bit odd, this one. Maybe, again, maybe it's just me looking too deep into it, but it threw me off a bit. The last criticism is about the characters Anthony and Dimitri, who I feel like they've elevated their karate skills a bit too much. Now, with Anthony, that he's not doing anything karate, but there's a particular scene when his first lesson we've chosen, he's with the other Miyagi Dojo students and they're given a task and he's the only one to really crack it. And I felt that he cracked it a bit too easy compared to everyone else. That's just me. I thought Sam or Hawk, Robbie or even Miguel would have realized what he's trying to teach him, but no, it's Anthony. I don't know why, I just found that a bit odd. And then with Dimitri, He's always been on the slow curb of growing his karate skills, so he's he's good, but he's not amazing. He's n he's not like the best f of the four. So when I saw him with Hawk in the last episode fighting just as good as Hawk, it kind of threw me like they elevated his character for certain scenes, and that comes to my last criticism that it, it's taking the show, which I always respected, it was grounded in reality. But now it feels like so many characters are elevating within like few episodes. I don't, I don't know, it just it bothers me. Hopefully I think they can fix this within the next season if they do get it renewed. But overall, I really did enjoy this show. I love the fact that they've got characters to squash these beefs, that they've gone on for so many seasons. We get to see the fight scenes elevating, we get more comedy gold than ever and whilst I don't think this season was as good as the previous one I still think it's a great watch. With that in mind, is it good? I'd say it's very good. Uh, ranking wise I'd say a nice 8 out of 10. Now when it comes to recommendations I'd recommend the first three Karate Kid films just so you can learn more about why Daniel has a distaste for Johnny, for John Kreese and for Terry Silver, you get to learn more details and also with Karate Kid 2 you get to learn more about the character Chosen and what he was like before he had his interactions with Daniel and afterwards like in the show and it's 
seeing the whole evolution of his character. Outside the Karate Kid franchise, I would recommend the film The Matrix because of the fight scenes in that film. Just like in Cobra Kai, amazing fight scenes. I think Matrix has some really great fight scenes with weapons, hand-to-hand -hand combat. I think some great fight scenes are maybe even better than Cobra Kai. I think the second and third film do also have those scenes. I think this one was a bit better, but that's just me personally. Last but not least is Kill Bill, another karate styled film. Definitely on the more gory and violent side, but still definitely worth a recommendation. Alright, those are my recommendations. This is my review. Do enjoy your day.